Corporal MC. Yes, sir. We've received notice from the Pentagon, and due to our unit's outstanding performance in Iraq, the 2-7 has been selected to spearhead the Afghan campaign. You will be the first ones in. We have wounded. We need a Casavac. Captain No go on the Casavac. We have to ask the British for their air support. BC-1. This is Corporal MC of the United States Marine Corps requesting emergency casualty evacuation at position 53624-23753. Roger. All our aircrafts are up right now. No help is available at this time. Next available slot is in seven to eight hours. Keep requesting, damn it, and keep me posted. We don't have much time. These people are severely hurt. We don't have the supplies to take care of them. The doc can only spare so much. Where's the nearest base from here? Delaram is three hours away. Gulliston is five hours away. They'll be dead by the time we get to any one of them. Alpha team, mount up. We're avoiding roads as usual. You know the drill. Roads are suicide. Keep your neck on a swivel. Might take another day and a half before we get to the next base. We're going to do our best here. Let's go. Corporal, we've got a situation out front. Possible contact. There's a burnt out Humvee about 150 meters north. Okay, Roger. Go off road then. Make our own trail. Let's move. Corporal, we're stuck here. It's been four and a half hours. Everyone keep digging. We need to get the hell out of here. Those people in the village have been watching us. We're sitting ducks. Just keep your eyes peeled. Truck approaching. Looks like they're setting something up. Mortar tubes or something. It's gonna start raining lead soon. Everyone take cover! Take cover! Oh, hell yeah! Bring it! Oh, shit! I think it blew up in the tube on them. Shit. It looks like it took out two or three of their own. Yeah, they're carrying something to the back of the truck. Now they're throwing all three on the back and they're heading out. Jesus. Someone threw us a bone today, boys. It could have been a really bad day. Did you pass the test? What? Dude, I said, did you pass the test? Um, I don't know. Hey, Deb. Good morning. Oh, crap. You up? Dude, sorry, just seeing this now. Phone died. Charging it now. You were up at four? Yep. Why? Nightmares. Oh my gosh, like PTSD? Yep. Do you want to talk about it? Mm. It's okay if you don't. What are you doing? Just got to VRC. What about you? Going home. From? I was just driving around. Does that make you feel better? Yeah. I'm glad. Why don't you go to sleep now? Can't. Why not? I don't know. I attempt to, then I wake up hours later. Take sleeping pills. They don't work for me. They make my nightmares worse. Super fucking worse. Aw, oh, lame. I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to help. My old psych said the same thing. What the fuck? They didn't help you? Gave me meds that didn't work and ghosted me. She ghosted you? He, yeah. The VA is a horrible system. <laughs> What the fuck? That upsets me. Do you ask Ledeth for help? What the hell is a Ledeth? Ledeth is a therapist that comes into the VRC every week to help vets. She's amazing, and people rarely go to her, so you totally could. Nah, she'll ghost me. No, she won't. All girls ghost me. I gotta go. Later. Look what I have here. I have a plastic straw and a plastic cup.
Yep. Uh, okay, so Lucas, tell me why you couldn't walk the extra 10 feet to your backpack to get your water bottle, fill it up, and drink out of it? Because you're lazy. And now you're gonna drink five sips out of it and then throw it away. Oh, does that hurt you? Did I hurt you, PC principal? No, you didn't hurt me. You were hurting the ocean and the fish who are going to consume it next week. Oh no, this wood plastic straw suddenly isn't in the VRC. <coughs> it's suddenly in my throat. Well, obviously I'm exaggerating, but eventually it's going to get to you because you are going to be eating the fish and the plastic you just used is in the fish. Dude, if my sushi has a plastic straw in it, can I use it for my boba? Totally! <laughs> so you two have your fun with your fish and go ahead and call me PC Principal, but this is a serious problem. Oh, okay, you think this one plastic straw is a serious problem? It's part of a huge problem. So what do you want me to do? Paper, use a paper straw? Paper straws are the worst. They disintegrate in your drink. And your precious metal straws need to be washed. Well, Fine, but why, why not? I, I mean, we all have to get used to small inconveniences so we can start making the big shifts. Okay, this is getting way too liberal. But hey, what about the water you waste? What water? The water you use to clean all those metal straws. <laughs> okay, so you keep making your jokes, but... We're the ones that are going to have to be dealing with all of this trash, and I'll be, like, breastfeeding my children plastic particles. Oh, don't even talk about that. Why does every woman think we want to hear that? Do that at home. Okay, so it's not always about you. Women aren't breastfeeding to please you, and babies need to be fed wherever they are, not just in the home. You don't even know what you're talking about. Just stop talking. Okay, so let me get this straight. A uh, woman can do whatever she wants, wherever she wants, but a cisgender white male should just shut the hell up. Pretty much. Uh, Lucas? How's that presentation coming? It's just about finished. Well, will it be ready? By about three o'clock when my class ends. Great. Max, are you reaching out to Eris Ali again today? President Coley and Ron Coley have both made it clear that all cadets on campus need to know we're here for them. I'm on it. I reached out to her yesterday, and today after class, I'm meeting up with her. Stock much? Hey, so I see your grandpa passed that roadkill bill. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, yeah, like, it's legal in California now to eat your own roadkill, thanks to your grandpa. California Senate Bill 395. See? Authored by your grandpa. Hold up, I'm gonna text him. Ask him if he's making dinner tonight. Okay, so he says it's the media misconstruing what they're doing as usual. He says it's important as a first step. Of course he says that, he's a politician. He has to frame it so he doesn't sound batshit crazy. All right, all right, let's not attack my grandpa. I'm sure there was sound logic behind it. And anyway, he writes a lot of other bills for veterans. Yeah, yeah, I know. Grandpa was a paratrooper. And he's the chair of the Veterans Committee, and he was the commissioner for the vet L.A. County Veterans Affairs for like 20 years. Yeah, and now he spends his time writing bills to make homemade barbecued elk the next big thing on Yelp. You have to compromise in politics. Okay, sure. Give Grandpa Roadkill my regards. I just can't even. Don't forget, we got the student filmmakers coming in today. Oh, great. Yes, it is great. Behave. Is the battery charged? Yes, Jasper, my battery is charged. Look. I just want to avoid what happened at the Asian Pacific Islander Center, okay? Yeah, and you were the one who supposedly charged the battery, remember? And who forgot to pack the backup battery? You! Okay, yeah, that was me. 
I don't see a lot of questions on that pad. That's because it's all up here. And that's what scares me. Look, these guys are military. They follow a different playbook. We can't do these interviews like we did at the other centers. Maybe. I don't know. But they're also students, just like we are. Just trust me on this, Sarah. We gotta go in full metal jacket. I don't even know what that means. It's from a movie, I think. I don't know, but I hear it's good. Fine, whatever. Okay, let's do this. Hi, welcome. Looks like you came prepared. We sure did. So this is the Veterans Resource Center. This main area here is where students come to work on projects or do homework. Over here is in this little kitchen, we have snacks and drinks. There's a microwave and a fridge available to everyone. And the commander in chief, President Coley says, we got the best food on campus. <laughs> this room here is my office and that one at the very back, that's Sam's office. He helps with benefits. Is everyone on staff of that? Or a dependent. That room over here is uh, the quiet room for people to focus or to have private, more private conversations. But everyone here is most everything anyway. <laughs> hey everyone. These are the students I told you about. They're from the communications department. They're making a movie about the student centers on campus. A film? It's a film? More specifically, a documentary film? It's our senior project. It's more than our senior project. It's, it's our ticket to Hollywood. Great, so who do you want to talk to first? Whoever wants to go first. I know. Why don't we do some introductions? Sounds great. I think she means for us to go first. Oh, right. Uh, my name is Jasper. And I'm Sarah. We're making short promotional films about all the student centers. It's our senior project. Cool. Oh, I'm Reese. Hi, Reese. Now, what branch of the military are you in? I'm a dependent. A what? Oh, um, military family members are called dependents. My dad was in the Air Force. Half her family is military, including her grandfather, Mr. California State Senator now. Oh, okay, cool. And you are? Lucas Porter, Marines. Hoo-ya! Oh, that's Navy. Hoo-ya is Navy. Or Coast Guard. Oorah! Is Marine Corps. Oorah! Oh, uh, uh oorah! No. <laughs> Close enough, but if you really want to say it right, it's Hua! Army are the only ones who know how it's supposed to be. <laughs> Doesn't the Navy say booyah? You all have it wrong. It's hua. Hua. Heard, understood, acknowledged. <laughs> Leave it to the Air Force to actually know what it stands for. Thank you very much. That sounded a lot like George's hua. <laughs> exactly. Leave it to the Chair Force to copy Army. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's working? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, that's better. Hi, I'm Gracie. That's Nomi, that's Deb, Lorena, you've met Lucas. That's Max, you know Reese. Oh, and the el elderly gentleman is George. Boomer needs a hearing aid. <laughs> oh, and uh, that's MC. Hey. Hi. Thanks for letting us come. With all due respect, but what's the deal? Did you guys know anything before you came here? I mean, I know you're working on your little project or whatever, but did you do any research? Like, how many branches there are? Why don't you know what a dependent is? Um... Lucas? I'm only asking a few questions. So what exactly is your agenda? Agenda? Everybody has an agenda. Do you like the military? Do you dislike the military? Well... I don't really know. Well, I think that's a pretty good answer. Maybe. For now. Geez, you sure know how to welcome someone. Sorry, Esme. Don't apologize to me. I apologize. Yeah, it is an all full metal jacket, though you gotta admit, that's a pretty damn good movie. Oh my god, George, here we go again. 
Hey, you're the one who thinks Black Hawk Down is the shit. I never said it was the shit. Hurt Locker is the shit. Good, but no. Apocalypse Now is the shit. Apocalypse Now is a piece of shit. Well, it dealt somewhat with Cambodian culture. Okay, Braveheart is the best war movie ever made, period. What? <laughs> yeah, Mel Gibson in a kilt. <laughs> Paths of Glory. What's that? Never heard of it. Probably because it's a piece of shit. No offense. <sighs> None taken. Takes place during World War One, starring Dan Kirk Douglas, directed by Stanley Kubrick. Best war movie ever. But hey, if you want to propagate U.S. hegemony via Hollywood fantasies, that's fine with me. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is this everyone? Oh, no. People come and go all day. The staff here are here for shifts, but they even swap out on different days. Most of them are students, too. Some undergrads and some graduate students. People hang out during their breaks between classes or whenever they like. Why do they hang out here? Why don't you find out? Maybe we should start the interviews? Roger that. Oh my god. Uh, can we just start asking questions? Absolutely. Who wants to be interviewed first? Go ahead, ask them something. Okay. <clears throat> what does duty mean to you? That's an interesting question. Yeah, why that one? Uh... When we think of the military, one of the first things that comes up is that word. It's a pretty good word. It's a complicated one. Or is it? So, what does it mean to you? If you don't mind. Duty can be heavy. Not everyone can handle it. It's being bound to complete something. An obligation bestowed upon or volunteered for. It's a value. A military value. It's long shifts, late nights during 24-hour posts, watching over the barracks, the rifles, the gear. It's our duty to protect. It's time away from my wife, missing her, being lonely, being outside my comfort zone, but staying strong, staying focused. Some people feel the military gave them structure. For me, it was simply an experience and it wasn't always done with a smile on my face. My duties as a daughter, a friend, a student, it's hard to explain. Is being a daughter making your parents proud? Showing them you're happy, because if you're happy, then they're happy. It's an action. One I had to do. I lived by that word and I grew. I'm the man I am because of it. I have father duty, husband duty, house duty. One of these days, I'll have grandfather duty. Every step I take is me doing my duty. I think without that duty, I would be pretty bad off. I think it's the responsibility to do the right thing. Your duty is to be happy. Even when you're not. We do it through diligence and genuineness. To believe in something bigger than yourself. Be present. Well, there's the political side of duty when questions of fundamental human rights come up. like what duty the country and government have to provide the basic needs to its citizens. But I also think of food. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, thanks. Hey, why don't we start off with some of the dependents? Nah, they aren't really in the military. They just have dads or family in it. Uh, excuse me? I'd like to give you some feedback. Uh, yes, ma'am. Let me help you understand something. When you're dependent, you are in the military. Isn't that right, Nomi? Ooh, absolutely. <laughs> Why don't you tell our friends here what it's like growing up in a military home? Well, mm, let's see. 
Oh, when my dad wasn't deployed, it was obvious in lots of ways. Obvious how? Like what? Well, one of my earlier memories was when he'd sing cadences. He sang to you? That's so sweet. Yeah. At 5.30 in the morning, he'd go, Get up now! Get on up! Get up and stretch your stuff! Get together! You got 23 minutes to be out the door and ready to preschool. Collect your things, private. <laughs> Sounds like home to me. My dad would start every morning with inspection, weekends included. Let me check the bed. Are these hospital corners crisp? Are these blankets tucked in tightly? Closet check. Is the floor clear? Each item hung up in its place? Okay. Is your homework completed? Esme, what are you doing? Oh, nothing much, Dad. <laughs> are you looking for something? Um, uh... I can't hear you. I'm, uh... Get it together, Esme. Your voice needs to be heard. I can't find my shoes. You can't find your shoes? You mean the ones that were scattered in the living room? Um... Uh... Well, since I found them thrown in the living room like garbage... I figured you didn't need them anymore, so I took them out back to the trash. <laughs> Try it out, Mom. Stove back on? Wait, what? Uh, no, um, no, never mind, never mind. Um, I'll be up in a minute to set the table. Dad. Don't worry. I've got this handled. I climbed all around back there in the dark with this stupid old flashlight. And I found that fuse box thing. You know, so Mama wouldn't get upset that dinner would be ruined and all that food would go to waste. Half cooked. We're just fine here. Without you. As usual. I won't let mom get sad. I saw that hug you gave each other before you left, and um, this time it was a long one. And I know what that means. It means you're going somewhere extra dangerous. But don't worry, I'm not scared. I'll make sure to prepare for anything. Handle it, right? Well, guess what? Every time you deploy, I tell myself it's the last time I'm gonna see you. That's right. I'll kill you off every time you walk away. So, I'll be ready. Just in case. So, you go do what you have to do, and I'll do what I have to. Wait, what? Who are you? I'm you. Dummy? What? Listen, I, I only got a sec, um, but I want to tell you something. You listening? Yeah. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that, yeah, Dad is gone a lot. That's true. And I know it's hard on you and Mom. And I, I know you feel like you gotta be the man of the house every single time he's deployed, but I just want you to know that he's going through a lot of traumatic stuff. And it has nothing to do with you, and that's just something that he'll, he'll have to work through. And you know, you will too. He thinks he's protecting you and mom by not telling you what's really going on, but 
He's going through a lot of shit. Yes, he did choose to be in the military, but understand this. He did not and will never choose the military over you. So, your name is? My name is Deb. Right, Deb. Are you a student then here? Student? Do I look that young? Okay, I take that back. Uh, no, I'm the assistant coordinator, and no, I am not a vet. Oh. Well, then why do you work here? I mean, I thought everyone here was in the military. My husband was in the army, uh, and even though I didn't serve, I'm still military. Every wife, every husband, every son, every daughter, uh, once one of us signs up, we're all in it together. And uh, is that good or bad? It's both, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Can you give me an example of what you mean by that? Okay, sure. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, my husband's a helicopter mechanic. Uh, he was stationed at Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan, and I'm here in the States. I get a call from him, and... He got shot on a mission. What? No, he's a mechanic. He doesn't go on missions. Oh, right. Anyway, uh, he sounds pained, annoyed, scared. Tells me he slipped and he fell. Uh, he was inspecting a Chinook. It was wet. Uh, and he slipped and he fell backwards from on top of the bird. His shoulder went out of his socket. Uh, and plus, he was worried about the, paint, the plate already in his neck. Uh, he's medevaced to Qatar for x-rays. And a week later, he sent back to the States at Fort Drum to get surgery. A year later, the Army medically discharges him after 14 years of service. We had to start all over. Basically... Our livelihood just disappeared, became non-existent. I could have lost my husband, or he could have become paralyzed if that plate was damaged. Those things didn't happen. I'm grateful for that, and I empathize with spouses of disabled vets. So I don't take life for granted anymore because it can change in the blink of an eye. Oh, it's my husband. I gotta take this. Uh, yeah, uh, that... I didn't expect that. Me neither. What do you think his story is? Not a clue. At times, happiness sits on the couch full of life and hope. But sometimes sadness swallows there as well. The joy of life. It leaves and never looks back. While sadness stays on the couch, leaving a stain. And what comes next? Who will provide guidance for the masses? Because they ask, where do I go? What do I do? And they are answered. Those who choose to live. Come and gather. You have an opportunity. Go see the sunset on the horizon so you may have a chance. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Uh, good. Fine. Good. Were you able to get all the classes you needed? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Well, actually, uh, the voc rehab counselor kind of messed things up. I'm waiting for him to fix my paperwork. Okay. I, make sure you talk to Sam about it. Oh, yeah. I will. So how are you liking the campus? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's okay. Yeah, I when I first started, I had to get used to it, too, a little bit. It's a little different than the military. Maybe a lot. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> so how you doing today? I'm, uh, you know, just trying to be present, just trying to, you know, be here. I get it. 
I, uh, I got a call earlier today that one of my buddies. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, um, sorry for your loss. Just last year, I found out that, um, one of my soldiers just, well, decided that he didn't want to be here anymore. If you don't mind me asking, what's that around your neck? Oh, it's a, uh, no, I don't mind. It's, um, corn pollen. It's my protection. It's a, uh, a way for my ancestors to look out for me so I don't succumb like my buddy. Wow, that's powerful. If you ever want to talk more about that, it helps. I mean, for me it did. And even though the stuff that came up before sometimes comes up, it, I really try not to push it down or ignore it anymore. I mean, Esme is here, and Deb is here, and Sam is here, and we talk. I mean, it's perfectly normal for us to share things like that here. Hey, Lucas, congratulations on getting hired at Congressman Cisneros' office. Yeah, thanks. How's it going over there? It's okay. Okay, what's the real deal? Nothing. I mean, okay, people are just so sensitive. You can't say anything. Hold up. Let me ask you something. How are you delivering your information? The Marine Corps way or with customer service? Well... Man, you have got to practice tact. You can't just call people out and, and, and yell at them. People need to just do their jobs. Yeah, but you can't just tell them to go fucking do it themselves. I don't do that. You do it here. I heard you say it to someone yesterday. You're not in the military out there. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not practicing here. These assholes know they need to just do it. Yeah, we get it, but go out and make us proud. Yep. Unbelievable. <laughs> What's unbelievable? What? Uh, what's unbelievable? Oh, um, it's my daughter. See? <laughs> oh. Was she at a party? If she wasn't, I'm going to start to worry. Well, is she in college? Yes, and don't get any ideas. I, uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, sir. I'm kidding. I doubt you're her type anyway. I doubt it too. <laughs> I like you. Thanks, I like you too. <laughs> Does your daughter go to school here? Nah, she wouldn't be caught dead going to the same school as me. Oh, boy, these people are idiots. Oh, hey, Mina. I don't know why you even read the paper. It just pisses you off. I know, right? Uh, how are classes today? Pretty good, thanks. How are yours? Uh, pretty good. That is, until my professor started spouting off a bunch of political crap. I still can't get over the fact that we're both going to college. What's to get over? Government occasionally gets it right, making it possible for an old vet to get a degree. Rarely is more like it. Uh-huh. So, did you burn down the administration building today? Haha, <laughs> very funny. No, that's tomorrow. <laughs> you know, universities to values free speech. Uh, here we go again. That's right. Here it comes. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, okay. Let me have it. Okay, Miss Sarcasm. If your school really valued free speech, you wouldn't muzzle conservatives. Uh. So please, Dad, you're a Latino. Who, you would like to be a left-leaning liberal Democrat? Yeah, make me proud, Dad. I'm U.S. Army, is what I am. Uh, you're gonna pull the Army card, huh? Damn right I am. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're no saints, I know that. 
But I also know that I've seen friends and brothers die in war. Your uncle served in the Air Force, uh, Marines, with cousins in the Navy and the Coast Guard. I know, I know. No, 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 no. I don't think you know. 99% of my professors lean way to the left. Sometimes they say things that are just aren't true. So I call them on it and I say, that's not true. So what do they say? What do they do? They say the same thing over again. Like it's supposed to erase my opinion. So I say it again. That's not true. Yeah, that's not cool, Dad. I mean, you should be able to have your own opinions. Exactly. Even if they're wrong. <laughs> if you weren't my daughter. Okay. Okay. Look, you have your beliefs. I have mine. Until your life experience puts you on the same path next to me. Okay, well, how about on a different path? Just near you. <laughs> Whatever. I'll still support you and your thinking. And if our paths never actually meet on this, it's okay. I love you no matter what. Well, that's the dad I come home for. <laughs> anyway, she's the best daughter a dad could ask for. You know what pisses me off? People who are late. And people who bitch about being broke. Oh, and dog moms. Dog moms. What do you... And and slow drivers. Okay, like people who drive 30 miles an hour on a 50 mile an hour road. I hate people who say shit like lit, mood, my peeps. Like grow up. Speak like an adult for Christ's sakes. And I really can't stand people who don't speak their own mind. Look, if I'm wrong, maybe I need to be told so. But I'll never know if somebody can't tell me. That is if anyone can get in a word edgewise. Aw, oh, sweet little Gracie likes everyone. Nothing bothers her. Not true. Oh yeah? Like what? You know what I hate? When people don't listen. <laughs> no, but seriously. Say I tell someone they hurt me, and they say, no I didn't. If they were actually listening to me, I mean really respecting me, they wouldn't tell me how I feel. Mm. Hey, man. Yeah, stop mansplaining, right? Uh, <laughs> sure. Hey, can I ask you something? Sure. Sarah, would you get this? Okay, let's see. Are you proud of your service? Of putting your life on the line for American values? Well, I... Was it all worth it? I mean, for example, we were just discussing this in class the other day. I mean, we all know there were no weapons of mass destruction found in Iraq, right? So do you all feel used by the government? Like you were out there for nothing? George Carlin? What's up, Max? You know my name. It's your fantasy, not mine. I, I guess that's true. But no one your age even knows who I was. <laughs> they should. You were one of the first comics to get up and tell the truth. You weren't politically correct. You didn't give a shit who you were pissing off. People say they want to know how we feel about our service and about America. But then they don't really want to hear what we think. People are full of shit. Say what you want about America. Home of the free. Land of the brave. But we got some dumbass motherfuckers floating around this country. No shit, George. That is the fucking truth. Man, I wish you were still alive. I'm right here. I mean, like... Shit, like, I, I feel like I can never just say what I'm thinking. Like, just say it. Come on, man. It's me. Think of it as your civic duty. Someone's gotta say it. Exactly. It's like today's society is absolute shit. It's imploding and no one can say anything. You think that's just today? What is the deal with these Christian pro-lifers with not an open-minded bone in their whole bodies? <laughs> exactly. 
And then there are the liberals who think that they are the only ones who deserve to speak. Yes, yes, that is completely the agenda on this campus. Oh, you mean the indoctrination center where you have been sent to be stripped of your individuality and be turned into an obedient, soul-dead conformist member of the American consumer culture? Yes, this is the place. Here, the agenda is to always preach diversity, but only if you're diverse in their way. People are allowed to speak up, but only certain people, and only the ones who agree. There is a silencing of differing viewpoints. Liberals, just like conservatives, are full of shit. And they're two sides of the same coin. What would you say to someone who says that you have had your say for years, and now it's time for others, the oppressed, to speak? I would say that just because I'm a straight white male doesn't mean that I've had it easy. I think economic status is the ultimate difference between easy living or struggling. Since I've been to college, I've never felt more like I don't matter or the things I say don't matter. In every sociology class, I've been taught how shitty and repulsive men who look like me are. I haven't wronged anybody based on how they look or their lifestyle. I, everyone deserves to be heard and treated fairly. My values are this. Do the best you can and don't be a dick. Just seems like a lot of people don't remember the second part. <laughs> you can say that again. Nah, I don't think I will. I think that's my cue to disappear. Are we proud? We're a lot of things when it comes to our having served. And I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Why don't we come back to that one? Good idea. What about orders? What do you mean? I see it in war movies all the time. Soldiers are given orders and then they, they kind of struggle with it. I mean, are soldiers supposed to follow orders without question? Or can you choose not to follow an order if you disagree with it? You mean if it's an unlawful order? What's that? An unlawful order is one in direct violation of a previous order from a higher ranking individual. Or of the Uniform Court Code of Military Justice. Or of the United States Constitution. Or even just a random personal favor. We're not just mindless robots following orders. Oh, no, no, no. I wasn't trying to insinuate... Abu Ghraib was an anomaly. Mostly. What? Oh, come on. Really? Abu what? Too soon? <sighs> okay, so like the Nazis at Nuremberg, I was just following orders. Oh, so they were following orders, but they knew it was wrong? Yeah, if you have a problem with an order or you need to fix something... You take it up the chain of command. That's what most soldiers do. Chain of command? Yeah, uh-huh. We're, we're told as privates to try to fix things at the lowest levels. But if the issue becomes too big, you take it to the squad leader, then sergeant, first sergeant, and so on and so on. Well, you don't jump chain of command, but um, sometimes there are also informal relationships, and that's where chain of command can be an issue. Oh, man, don't get me started. <laughs> You know you want to. Go ahead, Lucas. Let her rip. In the military, if you don't go through your proper chain of command, you're fucked. If you have a problem with someone in your chain of command, you're fucked. My chain of command sucked. Each and every one of them was a dick. Shitty thing is, when I became a leader, I was just like them. They were full of shit, and so was I. Just do what you're told. Yeah. Hey, thanks for taking the call. I need someone I trust. Yeah, so something went down yesterday on a roundup? One of my troops? He missed something? Should have caught it? He was fucking... Anyway, it ends bad. Real bad. Yeah. Cat casualties. 
not ours, but losses. Yeah, I know. I went to my superior officer as soon as it went down, but as soon as I gave him the who and what, you know what he said? Call it a clerical error. Yeah. This guy who did it, he's got a golden he's got a golden halo. Yeah, that's pretty much what he said. So in other words, to protect his reputation and what? Public perception? I'm supposed to falsify a after action report? In other words, let this fucking golden halo guy get away with it. What about what's right? Jesus Christ, this is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, that is exactly what they said. Yeah, in order, but this is bullshit. That makes me complicit. That makes me... How am I supposed to do that? What'll happen? Nothing, probably. Will it change anything? No. What's done is done. But what do you mean it doesn't matter? You don't believe that, do you? So you're saying, come on, but you don't. It is clear, message received. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Yeah. What? She said let her rip. I'll let her rip. Oh, God. Just chain of command. Lying in the sand. I see you, private, without a clue. I see you, sergeant, dealing with the boo hoo hoo. <laughs> Stop that lame ass crying. The brass knows you're lying. Behave, it's too much to handle. Go to church, let a candle, but don't skip on the proper channel. Get your ass in line, quit with the wine, all will be fine. You just stay in line. Wow. Oh, oh crazy. <laughs> A chain that binds. Behold its merciless bondage, it binds the idle hand, the loose lip. Online I say, to the left I say, all in line, good, now shackles on. These chains think, these chains plan, these links make the hand holding them bleed. The links revolt, they break and shake the line. Hold still, I will not. Keep it together. I, I will not. Chain, chain, go away. Leave my neck to breathe. Let it live and be vocal. But the chain is the grain. It is bitterness, that pain. It is new. It is temporal. It is a heavy gauge. Where is there to stay? To be not of metal, but of imagination, to be fake in a fake world and to be real in an illusion? What direction do we go? We cannot, for we are links. This 4022 metal needs to be displayed and remade. The surprise awaits. Shutting down. Battery at 15% capacity. Are all veteran centers like this? Not at all. I've worked on other campuses. Some are good, but let me tell you, Cal Poly's is something else. Yeah, this is probably the only place I feel like I completely fit in. Really? Like how? So you know how I'm an Air Force Reservist? Well, sometimes I don't know where I fit in. And I'm also kind of a shy person. Shy? Let's just put it this way. I would never rep anywhere else. When I first came to the VRC, Esme and Deb were like so welcoming, like the family I wish I had. They didn't judge me, they just 
accepted me for who I am and they like validated my place in the military. That is so cool. So Deb, may I ask, how long have you and Esme worked here? I've worked here since 2012. Esme was here from the beginning. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was actually a grad student here. Uh, her thesis research led to the awareness and need for a BRC on campus, and that helped establish it in 2012. And here you are doing all this stuff. Yep. It's a team effort. Thanks, you guys. Hey, Jasper, we should check out what's happening over there. Hmm. Yeah, I like the lighting over there way better. It's very Spielberg. Hey. Yeah, what's up? Tell me to sleep. Go to sleep. I can't. Why not? Just can't. What's wrong? Everything. Tell me. Nope. You tell me what's wrong. Nothing is wrong. Hey, Dad. How's it going? You know, another day in paradise. <coughs> right. Life's a bitch, and then you die. Dad. I see the stuff's arrived. Did you start writing? All that? No, I didn't get to it. Dad, last week you told me you would start. We, we talked for so long about it and you agreed to try. What's the point? Well, that is the point. Everyone has to find a purpose. I, I get that it sucks to be dealing with all of this, but you are the only one who can give your life purpose. You don't get it. There's nothing I can do to have a purpose. I'm not strong enough to work on cars anymore. I can't build shit. You think I don't want to be doing that? God, I used to, well, whatever. I'm useless and I just have to sit in this damn chair for the rest of my life. What's left of it anyway. Did you and mom go to that support group? Everyone says it might help to talk to other people dealing with chronic illness. Did you guys go on Wednesday? I didn't feel good. And you know your mom, when she gets home from work, she just sits on the couch and falls asleep. Maybe because she's tired? She, she works full time to keep this family afloat. <sighs> yeah. Why can't you drive yourself? I can drive myself. But you know those portables where they have those meetings are in the very back of the church. And I can't walk the whole way without my walker. And then there are stairs, and I can't climb those without someone with me. You always make so many damn excuses. Do you even want anything to change? I get that misery loves company, but there's only so much I can do for you, Dad. I can handle it. I don't want someone telling me to feel my feelings or whatever bullshit they're going to spew. How do you know if you won't even try? You promised me. If you face all that crap that happened to you and all the stuff that you did, maybe we could all have an honest conversation for once. I'm not sure I want to be that vulnerable with y'all. I want you to have a nice picture in your mind when I die. That is such bullshit. Well, you have to do something. Okay, so what about the shooting range? Did you call to see if they could accommodate you? I I'm sure they could sit you in a chair and bring you the gun and ammo. I want to, but I don't have any money right now. Payday was literally Monday. H how the hell did you spend your $400 in a week? Well, I bought Cassidy dinner and then, um... Oh, don't even I try to blame wasting your money on buying Cassidy one meal. I am so sick of this bullshit. How long do I have to live my life with a dad who won't help himself? You didn't put us through enough bullshit as kids. What about what you put mom through? I get that you had bad breaks. 
But you also made your own choices. I mean, can't you make some changes? Even one? If, if not for you, then at least for me. You may call me selfish, but I am sick of you saying you want to change and then you don't. If you just sit there, feeling sorry for yourself, smoking and watching stupid TV all day, every day, you are going to die faster. Do you want to live long enough to, to walk me down the aisle or, or meet my babies? You know I don't want to make you cry. And you know that I want to do those things with you. Then act like it. So, I'm guessing your families were all super proud of you when you decided to follow in their footsteps and join up, yeah? I'm assuming everyone is just part of some military clan? Like we're all just bred as soldiers for generations? No. I mean, it seems like people who think and feel the same way pass that along. Jasper, is it? And Sarah? Would you like to hear my experience? Yes, please. Thank you. When I told my parents I wanted to enlist, they were shocked. To them, the army just recruits people to use them as cannon fodder, or people who have no other option. Wow, was it hard for you to convince them? Well, I'm not sure that I have completely, but they've come to accept it. I relate to having resistance. Shall we save from home? Oh yeah? Can you talk more about that? Well, no one in my family's from the military either. Um, they didn't understand why I wanted to join, and even more, they didn't think I could handle it. I guess part of why I wanted to join was to prove myself I could. So, you're an Air Force veteran? No, I I'm an Air Force Reservist. I serve on the weekends, that's how I'm able to go, go to school full-time and serve. Of course, if I'm called up, I would have to go wherever I'm needed. Okay, so you're like part-time military? Well, no. I... Do you feel just like everyone else in the military? I don't think everyone feels any one way. But I guess for me, it's kind of challenging. Like, feeling completely part of it. You're one of us. But you've got to beef up your cussing skills. You're still too sweet, little girl. Is the camera paused? Yeah. Fuck off, Lucas. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sarah. <sighs> this is great, but... But what? We need to go deeper. Sure, I agree, but... Follow my lead. Did you ever kill anyone? Hey. Jasper! Oh. What? It's a legitimate question. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, let's get another round. Just how hammered are we gonna get? Enough to beat the last time we all got together. <laughs> yeah, but then we won't even remember this time. <laughs> Dude. Were you pissing the whole time? Well, it's got a long way to go. Oh, please. That's what she said. <laughs> oh. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> that's so gross. Damn. I guess that's what happens when you get yourself shot. As if I asked for it. Twice. Hurts though, right? I only want to walk. You know, I never saw it coming. But not the same for that other motherfucker. They, I don't know where. I go down. I look up, and the same Haji gets one of my buddies. So I pull out my weapon and shoot. And I get him, but I have to be sure. I haul my ass over to him, look him in the eye, and just... Bam, bam. See these? X. What do they mean? 
It's his kill count. Oh. A lot of my buddies are someone else's ex. We all don't go out that way. A girl in my unit, she just uh, killed herself. Look, I just want you to know I'm here for you. Yeah. Yeah. Both of you. Well, we believe you the first time. <laughs> we just wanted to hear you say it twice. Yeah, to our brothers and sisters. To our brothers and sisters. Our brothers and sisters. Remember when we first met? We hated each other. Yeah. You thought you knew it all. I tried to be nice and explain how things worked in the platoon. I was a total asshole. Until he realized he wasn't the holy shit he thought he was. Uh. And when we got back, I had this dick be my best man. <laughs> and then he had the nerve to move to fucking Idaho. Who the fuck lives in Idaho? Cows and vets. <laughs> to cows and vets. To cows and vets. To cows and vets. <laughs> you look like you were about to say something else. Nope. Hey, could I ask you something? Sure. What do you think? What do non-military people say that pisses you off? Huh. Uh, well, thank you for asking. Are you sure you want me to answer that? Yeah. Well, uh, they say a lot of things that piss me off. Um, oh yeah, I couldn't move away from my family. Or, why can't you make plans six months from now? It's plenty of time. Oh, they'll say... Why does the military get special treatments and discounts? Or how could you just leave your kids like that? Oh yeah. Are you scared you might die over there? Did that answer your question? Yeah, it did. Thanks. I have one. I get flustered when civilians think assertiveness is aggressive. You can't really say what you mean. Okay, cool. I got one. So, just how many vets have PTSD? Jasper, I don't think you can ask that, not like that at least. I know these are tough questions, but we got a chance to get some good stuff here. That's the problem. You're calling it the good stuff. Don't you see how misguided that is? Well, I call it good filmmaking. <laughs> it's you thinking you know more about the military than the actual people in the military. Okay, fine. Don't do this one, okay? I'll take it from here. Give me the camera. No, that's... No, that's not what I... No, I'm not just walking away from this. No, it's okay, really. You don't have to. Oh, I'm not mad, no. I'm just... <laughs> Don't I... say you're not mad because you are. Okay, I am mad. Give me the camera. No! What the fuck? Is it broken? I don't know. Here, let me. No! I... Just... Just... Give me a minute. Whoa, what happened? Do you need some help? A lot. I'm sorry about your camera. Yeah, me too. How bad is it? I don't know. I just... I feel like we're offending people and I don't want to do that. I would actually like to get to know you all, but we just keep... 
Well, it, it takes time. And each person in here has their own story. And they open up when they're ready. And people here have thick skin, so don't worry too much. Really? Maybe you should try asking more of the questions. I always say, trust your gut. And don't be shy about talking with your partner too. Thanks, Lorena. Oh my God, it works. There you go. Oh, what's up, stranger? Hey, young blood. Back so soon? Did you miss me already? Yeah, that's it. <sighs> Anyways, I couldn't leave you hanging. Oh, that, that's cool. You're my first friend here at this damn school. But also I have an appointment with Sam. Ah, uh, cool. Um, well, I don't want to leave you hanging or anything. Um, he's in his office, so you just, just go on in there. Now you know early's on time, on time is late, and late is unacceptable. I've got some time to kill. Anyways, how's the ROTC program here? Are they teaching you anything? Uh, not really. I've learned a lot more uh, from the folks here in the VRC. I mean, we're supposed to be preparing for advanced camp, you know, to see what branch and component we'd be best suited for, but I still feel like I don't know anything. Well, most lieutenants don't. Well, uh, damn. <laughs> uh, that's, that's not the first time I've been told that. But still, I, I, I don't want to be completely clueless when I become a butter par. Admitting you don't know everything's the first step. Listen, there's going to be a lot of NCOs there who've been there a lot longer than you and know a lot more than you. So be a leader and don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, the, the Jill Sergeants told us, you know, don't be a blue falcon and don't try to dictate everything. I bet your Jill Sergeant was one of those macho who are hard ass guys, right? Yeah, uh, well, um, at least at least one of them was. I did have a lot of respect for one drill sergeant especially. I mean, he made it his mission to get all the female cadets scored away. Oh, that's rare. Most males, especially drill sergeants, don't give two fucks about their female recruits. Did he tell you to always be aware of your surroundings? No, he, he didn't tell us that. Not surprising he dropped the ball on that one. Look, all I'm saying is as a soldier, you need to have your head on a swivel at all times. And that goes double for female recruits. It is imperative that you're always aware of your surroundings and that you never go anywhere alone at night, especially at night, okay? Promise me, young blood. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, loud and clear. You know... I really appreciate all the tips. I mean, you can get a job here in the VRC with those skills. You know, make sure some of us future butter bars are prepared for the real army, at least. <laughs> nah, crowds make me nervous. Anyway, it's almost 1300. I gotta get in there. Sure, uh, yeah. Um, and thanks again, Sam. See you next time? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. I was just walking by and I couldn't help hearing. Uh, I really didn't mean to, y you know. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's, it's cool. Sa Sam's all right. I bet they would have been okay talking with you too. She's just, you know, she's been through some shit. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I really didn't mean to be listening in, but did she mean she was, did someone? Yeah. Wow, that sucks. I feel like people don't really know about that. Probably not. I mean, definitely not. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Uh. You'd be interested in talking with me sometime about, well, talking with women in the military who've experienced this. 
to see if they'd want to be a part of a documentary that explores it. I mean, I don't want to make assumptions or re-traumatize anybody, but... No, I, I, th I think that's a good idea. Um, hit me up some time. Let's talk. Where is Ladef? She comes in on Wednesdays from 11 to 1. Ah, damn it. Why? Because today is not Wednesday. I could ask her to stop by the center. She's always willing to help vets. Caps also has crisis counseling. I don't need crisis counseling. I just wanted to know where she was at. And what's Caps? It's counseling and psychological services. You could go there, they assign therapists to students. Are they better than the VA? I go to someone outside, but I know a lot of people who have had good success with them. Mm. Just a thought. At the health center place? No, actually. It's in the same building as the bookstore, but tucked back into a corner. Oh, well, that's where I'm at right now. You should go sign up. Yeah, I'll wander around and find her. If you're on the first floor and you're facing the entrance to the bookstore, you can start walking to the right. Before you get to the exit, you make a left down the hallway, and when you get to the end of the hallway, you see the entrance to Caps on the right. Yeah, guess I'll just wander around. Hit me up later. <laughs> hey, Sarah. Can we talk? Yeah, sure. I'm sorry if I'm bulldozing over you. It's just... I just really care about this, and... I guess I don't know how to deal with this. Me neither. Um, well, how about we talk about what we want to say together? Before I go and say something stupid. Sounds good. And I might ask some questions too. Great. Oh, how's the camera? I fixed it. Oh, yes, I could kiss you. Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you better stand at attention when the colonel is talking. Be dead. I know you're at work. Sorry, you got a second? Uh, yeah, I got a second. You're going in the first regiment, right? Just wanted to double check. Yes, sir. Did you get your orders? Yes, sir. Okay, you have your flight itinerary is all put together? Yes. Yes, sir. Do you have all your gear? Uh, what gear? Do you have Gore-Tex? It's Gore-Tex. It's a jacket. A thick jacket. <clears throat> uh, no, sir. I don't have that. Do you have a flight bag? No, sir. Do you have a rucksack? No, sir. Damn! Did ROTC provide you with anything? Um, all right, all right. Let's start from the beginning. Do you have uniform? No, sir. Seriously? What do you have then? All they issued me was a protractor, a compass, uh, some, some 550 paracord, and uh, they gave me a firm handshake and wished me the best of luck. I'm going to make some calls and uh, try to get you the stuff you need. Okay. Love you. Love you too. What's up, baby bird? How was that conversation with Papa Bird? Um, <clears throat> I just realized that I'm not prepared. And I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Most lieutenants don't. <laughs> <laughs> You are more competent than most of those dudes in ROTC. Okay, I expect a lot out of you. I think you give me way too much credit. I'm just as lost as the rest of the cadets. You go as far as you want to go, and if this is the career you want to go into, then you're going to have to go through it regardless. And you know what that means. Airborne and Ranger School. <laughs> really? I, uh, I gotta go to Ranger School too? Well, at least you won't have to cut your hair too much. And don't worry about all the gear. They'll sort you straight and give you all that shit over there. 
Oh, so that's the list? Uh, yep. This is uh, every kid I go in the summer. Two females total, huh? Yeah. And I'm the only one that's black. How did you do it? How will I... How will I be able to relate to others who don't look like me? I mean, we're, we're all going to be in basic camp together, but... Being a woman of color in the army just means you have to work that much harder. Have a good support system around you. Your family, your friends, and you'll acquire people as you go. You'll meet some people at basic that will become your lifelong friends. I consider mine like family. And on your bad days, well, you'll have some people that you can talk to and sort of get some stuff off of your chest. In a way, you won't have to hold up your bravado with them anymore. You can be vulnerable with them. When I was there, I wasn't much of an athlete, so that's what I had to work at the most. But when people started to take notice of how hard I was working, I gained a lot of respect for that. And I made myself approachable, which counted for a lot too. Just do your best. That's all you can do. And make sure you help out your fellow, fellow soldier too. If someone fucks up, we all fuck up. If someone does awesome, we all do awesome. As long as you're pulling your weight and helping others, you'll be fine. Basic is all a mind game. The drill sergeants will try to get into your head. They yell at you, make you do crazy exercises, even if you did nothing at all. Just stay motivated. Keep doing what you're doing and it'll be over before you know it. I have some uniforms over at my place if you wanna come take a look. If they work, you're welcome to them. Wow. Uh, thanks, Lorena. That, that, that'd be great. Um, just, <clears throat> um, thanks. Hey, so RSLE's coming in tomorrow morning at 10. All right, Max. I don't know how you do it, but I'm glad you do. <laughs> one person, one day at a time. Just doing the Lord's work, Esme. <laughs> Hi, Max. So... I hear you guys are making a documentary about us. Is that true? Uh, yeah, we are. Do you want to talk with us? <laughs> Absolutely. I can tell you about my time in Iraq. Want to hear that? Yeah. Okay, so, there were some intense days. Oh, yeah? Like, what kind of days? What happened to you? Did you get into battles? Jasper! Oh, sorry, um... Tell us whatever you'd like. <laughs> oh yeah, battles all the time, every single day. Would it bother you to tell us about one of those days? <laughs> well, this is hard for me to talk about. Matter of fact, it was supposed to be secret. Oh wow. Well, do you think you would be allowed to tell us any details? <laughs> well, I'm not supposed to break my vows. But I think it's okay since it's for Educational purposes. Cool. Thanks, man. Now, which of my confirmed kills should I tell you about? Hmm. Ah, man. There's so many to choose from. Okay. Okay, so, there was this one time that I was in a gunfight. We had two guys shooting from behind that wall. And we were taking suppressing fire. Sorry, what does that mean? <laughs> it means when the enemy is shooting so many bullets at you that you can't do anything. Oh, wow. What did you do? <laughs> well, I had to think quick. So I'm thinking, why not just shoot the wall down? How do you even think in a situation like that? <laughs> yeah, it's tough. But you gotta, or you die. So I'm thinking if we shoot the wall down, it'll take care of the problem. So I started shooting at it with the 50 cal. 
and then boom, took down the entire wall. It crumbled into little pieces. Wow, pieces. what happened to the shooters? <laughs> they got splattered by the wall. We took care of the problem. Your commanding officers must be real proud of you. <laughs> oh, uh, it's funny you mention that. <laughs> yeah, why? Because my battalion, uh, because my battalion commander wanted to use my story in the book he's writing. Is that right? What's the name of your battalion commander? <laughs> oh, uh, I don't remember. It's been a while. Of course you wouldn't know. Didn't you tell me you were a cook? Yeah, but I was assigned to an infantry unit. Yeah, what unit was that? Oh, uh, it was 27. That's my unit. Want to know why you know that unit name? Uh, um... Because I'm the one who told you that story six months ago. Wait, you didn't shoot up a wall? Well, I did get the opportunity one time to be assigned to a turret. Not unless they weaponize your spatula. This stuff. I did see some action. I got shot! It's bullshit. You're a joke. Everybody wants to be a grunt until it's time to actually do some grunt shit, right? The fact that you would try to claim somebody else's pride makes you a blue falcon. You don't know everything I've done. This fobbit never left the wire. I mean... Break out your 214. I don't have it on me. It's on Sam's computer. We can go get it real quick. Man, I don't have to prove shit to you. Of course, the coward wouldn't. Hey, 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 what's going <laughs> on here? This asshole, it's all up in my business. I wouldn't be if it was actually yours. Hey, you two office now. <sighs> what was that all about? I don't know. Was that guy... Telling someone else's story? You get guys like that. Maybe he thought it was his. Thanks. You're MC, right? That's right. You're Sarah? Yeah. I'm Jasper. Yeah. I know. Do you want to ask me something? Really? I mean... Yeah, okay. Um, oh, I know. Can you tell us about your big homecoming? Like, did you have family uh, come running up to you and giving you a hug? Like those cool YouTube videos? Did you, like, cry and stuff? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, did I cry? Uh, no, I didn't cry. I'm sure. But you did have that whole relief thing. Weren't you super happy to be home? Happy? Uh, well, I didn't have any people like to meet me, but even then it wouldn't even, it's kind of like, it, it's weird. I guess inside I was happy a little bit, but as far as showing it, it's a, it's a big mental block. You mean because you're a tough Marine, right? <laughs> no, not that. But you were happy, right? It's kind of hard to understand. I mean, do you really want to know what I felt? Yeah, we really do. So like being in an environment like combat and then getting out, it leaves you a bit numb. It's like that going in as a newly trained Marine and then coming out a bit salty. I call it zombification, where each month that goes by, there's this numb pit in the center of your being, and each month it spreads and takes you over more and more. I mean, you know you're you, but it's almost like taking a back seat to yourself. But you gotta give it about the first two months each time in Iraq to figure it out. I mean, you get numb, the training takes over like you're a robot. You go through the motions, I mean, you're here, and you know you are inside somewhere, but once you suit up and go out, all that gets put away because you do see people hurt and killed. 
and your main goal is to not have it happen to you, I mean, you're going to do what you can. Your power, your mental will, no matter how sleep deprived, how malnourished you are, it's just like once you get there, it's just like go. Too. I'm a Marine infantry machine gunner. I did a tour in Iraq and then Afghanistan. The Pentagon said, we want you guys to spearhead the Afghan campaign, be the first ones in, the tip of the spear, because of how well my unit had performed in Iraq. But in Iraq, everything was established. There were bases there, Air Force, Army, I mean, in Afghanistan, there was maybe an Italian base far to the north, so we piggybacked off the British base. They give us this little section on their base that we'd set up shop in. From there, we pushed out. And this is the Helmand province, the southwestern side of Afghan, which is huge. There was no air force, no air support, no artillery, so it was really... It was a challenge. And towards the end, what made it difficult for us was that usually you have like a seven, eight month turnaround before we get relieved and sent back to the States. But then the Pentagon tells us, uh, okay, um, we don't have anyone to relieve you yet. We, uh, we don't know when it'll happen. So just, you know, just, just stick it out. And so we were out there and, uh, there's only so much you can take, and it was, it was, um, for a lot of people, it was daily fighting. And at night, they, they'd sneak up to the base, and uh, I was a corporal at the time. So I was in charge of overseeing people. If they were on guard or on post, I had to go up and check up on them every hour on the hour for 24 hours straight. You go make your rounds, you get about 20 minutes of sleep. You get back up like clockwork until it's your time to go back out again. So your sleep is sporadic. You sleep in any way you can. So on the rocks, concrete floor, standing up, sitting down, you know, your body will sleep in many positions. It'll have you surprised. Anywhere you can. It's nonstop and it's like, I mean, during those adrenaline rushes, it's like the most spectacular natural high and it leaves a lasting impression because it's what kept us going. But when you're out, then it suddenly ends and your body feels lacking. When you leave the military, it's cut like a like a like an attic would be, you know? From start to finish, it's been 8, 9 months, no breaks. And then bam, you get home and people are hugging and stuff, but I couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't feel anything. And so that numbness, I would say in Iraq after my first appointment, it was about 40%. And then I went to Afghan, which was even worse. I came back to the States and it was like 100% numb, just that, that zombie mode. That numbness through and through it, uh, it was one hell of a time. So I tried to get that familiarity back. I would start pushing limits to, to get that chemical cocktail back. Something to make me feel alive because you realize when you come back, you're out. You lose one of the biggest things that you had. And when you're there, what you have is that thrill. Because there's no one closer, even than family. There's There's no one closer that'll ever have your back than that guy to your left or right who's willing to die for you, you know? Who has your back and you have his. You're stuck in this hell hole far from anyone, you know, remote, you know? Where people don't even know you exist anymore and you are relying on each other for safety. And that's all you have. No phones, nothing for the entire duration. There was no contacting any of the outside world. As far as the world's concerned, you don't exist.
that first year back, that numb state was in full effect. I was trying anything to feel, you know? And that was, <laughs> that was wild times. I didn't really care about repercussions or penalties. I mean, that was the last of my worries. It took me about three years to finally get to a point where I started making sense of everything, of what I was doing, where I was going. When I think back to it, I'm like, who was that? You know? It took me about two and a half years to smile again. Nearly three till my first laugh. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. So, got an idea. We can first start off by talking about Fountaine's uh, expression of patriotism. You know how it's like, if it's intentional, it's self-serving, and if it's not, then it's more authentic. Uh, yeah, so, what do y'all think? Wait, can you go back? Uh, back, what, what do you mean? Like, like back, like just back up a little bit. I don't get it. Uh, okay. Uh, Gr Gracie, Gracie, did you read? A little bit. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. All right. Fine. We'll back it up. We'll back it up. Um, so what part did you leave off on in the book? The introduction. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that part was in the introduction. It's, it's fine though. It's cool. Um, you know what? We could just. Uh, no wait let's just just give her basic examples to, to keep this moving forward okay all right um oh i got it i got it all right we'll just start from page 37 with the floating words right how he's throwing out words about the iraq war how about that hey reese serious question about your grandpa's policy go for it so for dinner tonight Armadillo or deep fried chupacabra you know what? No, or what do we that. do? Stop I just want to know that. what that it is tastes not like. Funny. I'm, just, I'm curious. It is not funny. Is it better than elf? It was it was misconstrued. This is it, the VRC. You'll find yourself here most days, but oh hold on. Sam. Sam. Hey, this is Derek. He's finally here. I've been telling you about him all week. He if whenever you're ready, can you have a word? Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Hey, uh I know I'm not part of the VRC or anything, but do you think you could come back sometime and, uh... Yeah. I think so. Well, that'd be great. Thanks. Sure. You know, MC, you're going to be doing this, right? What are you? What do you mean? Leading the new peeps. You're gonna be here and you'll tell them your stories and you're gonna tell them, hey, it's okay when they're having a bad day. You'll say, come on in here and hang. And before you know it, the day will pass. <laughs> <laughs> 